Uh, we're live with Packway Handle Band in Studio B on WNCW this afternoon. So uh, I love the reference to Sleepy LaBeef in that tune. How did, how did that get in there? That's actually uh, one of Jem White's songs uh, that we learned from him, and he, uh, he has a really good story about it. But um, to long story short, he was playing at a folk festival and played one of the songs, and I guess Sleepy LaBeef was in the audience and was really offended by it. It was, um, who is it? God, God was drunk when he made me. Yeah. was the song. And so um, by Jem's account, uh, he was followed around the rest of the festival by Sleepy LaBeef trying to win him over to the Lord. And uh, he was basically, by the end of it, trying to hide from him. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's how that went. Yeah, Jim, Jim has a lot of stories like that. Yeah. Yeah. He, he knows he, he's got he a did, treasure trove. Of yeah, that. really. I, you know, and he has songs like that too. They're they're going to they're going to they're going to get a reaction. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, they're not for, they're not easily forgotten. That's right. A lot of them. So, I love the concept of this record it is called uh, Take It Like a Man. So, getting together with Jim White and picking his songs to play and then he picked your songs to play on the record. Is that correct? Pretty it much. worked out that way. I don't think that was the plan, really. But you know, it, he gave us about twenty of his songs and said, "Are there any ones on here that you like?" And we came up with a, f- a few. And then um, we gave him, you know, or we had already given him about ten of ours, and he picked some that he liked of ours. I said, "I don't think you've got enough for a whole record, but here's twenty of mine." <laughs> you know, <clears throat> <laughs> and we, you know, there we there we were. So your first exposure to Jim White, if what I read is correct, goes back to 2006 at Burning Man and, and a DJ that was playing some of his music. Is that correct? Yeah, DJ Jihad was his name. He was from Texas. So it's, let's see, DJ, then G-E-E-H-A-W-D. Okay. Hawed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's kind of, kind of funny. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you need to print it, that's how it's got to be printed. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Um, Burning Man is not for the faint of heart. Pretty grueling. You know, I, I would not dare. And we actually were talked into it by our fiddle player. He had been a couple times before, and I think we had all heard different stories and had different impressions of it, but I think we all, in our own way, had good times, except maybe our bass player, who <laughs> has some horror stories about it. Because it's so extreme. You're You're in this, you know, you're really out there in the middle of the desert, and it's incredibly hot Mm -hmm. and the facilities are pretty limited yeah it's incredibly cold too in the evening and cold at night it's easy to easy to look over about the desert yeah i I mean (laughs) it's already passed it's already passed the the worst part i think that i i didn't realize how windy and you know um how hard it was going to be to see with all the sand kicking up during the day. So like the first thing I discovered was I didn't have a good pair of goggles and that's crucial if you're going to walk around during the days. There's not much to buy in the way of goggles and amenities no. either. No, you could probably trade it for a few favors or something along those lines. But yeah, it's, you're pretty much there and you're, you're, there's no way out, you know, you're, you're in there for the, the week or as long as you're going to stay. So you got exposed to Jim's music, loved his music. And then how did you eventually meet? Wow. Um, I mean, I, I think that what ended up happening is that he just moved to Athens. You know, I mean, there's a lot of places he could have moved to. He just happened to move to where we lived. And then I think I saw him, I think the first, you know, I'd seen him play a couple times in Athens. I thought this was great. I mean, he lives here now. And and um, I think, I've, anyway, I'd seen him play. He approached me at a thrift store, at the Habitat for Humanity thrift store, and said, oh, I've seen you guys play. I'm working with a group named the Skipper D's, uh, and they, they're putting together a record. One of the records needs some bluegrass instrumentation on it. Would you guys mind, you know, stepping in and doing it? They don't have, you know, big budget. But, and we said, sure, we'd do it. And in doing that, we just got to know him a little bit. And we were thinking about making our next record, and that's when we made the approach to him, uh, the, you know, for that. And then here we are, you know. And here we are. are, and he's not even here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it works. I mean, you you've had an extensive history. We'll we'll go into a little bit more about that. But you've most of you have known each other going back to high school, and you've been a band on your own right for a good ten years. So we won't make this whole thing about Jim White because it's not. But uh, his ego is already too big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were the last time Jim White was here. He just regaled us with stories of things like stalking David Byrne and stuff like that. So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
We're live with Packway Handle Band on WNCW this afternoon, and you can find out about them on their website, packwayhandle.com. They're playing in Asheville tonight at Isis Restaurant and Music Hall and tomorrow night in Charlotte at the Visual Light, and they're touring in support of Take It Like a Man. Packway Handle Band on WNCW this afternoon on a frigid Thursday here in Spindale. Frigid pretty much everywhere. Have you had any difficulties from all of the storms? We did okay, at least in Atlanta. Leaving Atlanta, we were fine. It was about 12 degrees, and we thought it was cold. And our friends said, yeah, it's about 2 degrees up here. Pack your hat. So, <laughs> I mean, but we made it. No incidents in, in our car. How about y'all? No, we did good. Um, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, it, it was nice and easy getting up here. Mm -hmm. yeah, you definitely want reliable transportation. No breakdowns on the highway and this sort of mess. Mm, that's true. So, uh, but haven't had an introduction for the band yet. Could you guys... Give us, give us who you are. Well, I'm standing here. I'm Andrew Heaton. I'm the fiddle player. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Josh Irwin. I play the guitar. My name's Michael. I play upside down mandolin. I'm Tom Baker playing the banjo. Zach McCoy, bass, prayer translation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Michael, yeah, the upside down mandolin for the left hand player that didn't feel like having a left handed mandolin. Yeah, it was uh, definitely out of um, just not enough knowledge about what I was doing. I just picked it up the wrong way and just basically just went with it and learned enough on it. I didn't want to look back. I didn't want to try and start from scratch. Because you are right handed with everything else, right? Yeah, except for pool. So it's not about pool. that. That's important. Yeah. Yeah, select few artists, I think mainly that I know of, guitarists that have that have done that, that have, for whatever reason, early on, they just played it upside down. Yeah, I mean, I, I, just, I don't know if it's always out of ignorance. Mine was definitely out of ignorance. I just didn't know any better. <laughs> I don't know who would want to do that to themselves in the first place. Yeah, I don't know. Either. That's like Jim. Well, Jim claims he doesn't know actual car, uh, chords on the guitar. Yeah, he but just, he does fine. Yeah. He does all right. Yeah. So uh, most of you lived pretty much all your life are from Georgia, and you've uh, had an extensive history together. Uh, tell us about the beginnings of the Packway Handle Band. Oh, it's, it's probably a pretty ugly start um, if you want to go way back, but um, we used to play um, in Josh's basement. We used to play, you know, just raucous, loud music, and I would play drums. I think Tom would play bass, and Josh would play electric guitar, and Zach would come over and watch us and judge us. I think you even played a little electric guitar then, didn't you? Uh, yeah, they weren't good enough for me to participate. <laughs> <laughs> so I... Oh, oh, oh. He, you had to wait oh. for them to get to you. I had to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the patience you had. But we, we all, you know, toyed around with music, didn't do anything serious, and then when we got to um, school in Athens, we just started getting uh, into bluegrass, and it, I don't know, we uh, just started picking up different instruments tom picked up banjo josh was on guitar and then i picked up mandolin and just went from there just started learning music and playing around town so that was sort of your direction from the beginning it was less electric and more acoustic all the way yeah we all just kind of uh found inspiration in bluegrass at the same time just really got into some of the old recordings old in the way and that kind of thing and just went from there well it's great to have you in spindale this afternoon and uh, what are your near-term plans? I know you're probably touring a lot with the record. Uh, any, anything coming? Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you about near-term. Coming up in Atlanta, tell us about Shaky Boots. That's an iteration of uh, this festival that started a couple of years ago called Shaky Knees. Um, and uh, let's see, I think the first one may have been two years back. We played Shaky Knees last year. Well, it went well, and the folks who put that on started uh, more of a country version of it called Shaky Boots, which is um, takes place in Kennesaw, which is actually northwest of Atlanta, maybe 30 miles. That's where all of us grew up, actually, at Kennesaw. Kennesaw State University is where the Shaky Boots is going to be. So um, it's exciting. Uh, there's not as many big country festivals, and we've not done anything that's more leaned on the country side of things. I think we can kind of wedge ourselves into wherever, you know. We, can, we fit in that sort of rock, shaky knees, genre uh lineup and so it'll be interesting to see what shaky boots is going to be like is there anybody on the bill that you haven't met that you're looking forward to maybe jamming with michael who's your doppelganger <laughs> dirk Bentley. yeah dirk Bentley. <laughs> michael's gonna sit in with dirk Bentley, maybe that's right i'm gonna try and <laughs> sign some autographs on his behalf yeah. oh there you go <laughs>
You might, you, you could pull it off. I know. I got to shave my head or something. <laughs> it's not gonna look. I got too much hair to pull it off now. <laughs> not a song. Packway Handle Band Live in Studio B on WNCW. And okay, I did. I don't. I'm not looking at the credits. Okay. But a Jim White tune. Or is that your tune? That was that was, our, was ah. one of ours. Michael wrote that one. Okay, Michael wrote that one. Jim 316, the very first one, was a Jim tune. Though. Okay, all right. And this is a Jim White shirt, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. It was. He gave it oh, gave it to me, though. It was somebody else's before it was his, too. That's right. <laughs> all right. There's some stories in that shirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this will be live. This will be re this is re being recorded to put on YouTube, so oh, good. we'll all get to witness the yellow shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll leave it <laughs> in, on for y'all. In time. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, very catchy melodies. It, 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 you know, there are elements of these songs that that seem to, you know, have that real pop sensibility. Even though you're you're firmly, you know, rooted in acoustic and you know, kind of Americana kind of direction, you know, some bluegrass influences and things. The the melodies and such, it, it seems to have a root in you know, like FM, maybe AM radio from thirty or forty years ago. I did that on purpose. <laughs> no, I I'd always written kind of out out of the box type of songs, so I, I like the idea of kind of, I guess sort of uh, bringing it back to more of a you know accessible place. And I like the reason I like this song is it's kind of it's it's an upbeat sounding song, but the lyrics are actually pretty tragic. You know, I like that sort of um, that juxtaposition yeah good word. i think we've always been i think everybody in this band listening to their their style of music you, you ride around in a van with somebody you know around the west for months weeks at least what we were doing you start to really get an idea of what music everybody likes to listen to i th i would think it's fair to say we're all pretty into melody except maybe zach i think he's our bass player might not be as into melody as the rest of us are but um you know it's in some of these songs too. <laughs> so riding around, tell us about the van rides because that that that's a you know a place where, like you say, you're riding around for maybe weeks at a time and you're stuck with whatever you've got. Do you have the technology to branch outside of whatever you've brought into the van? How does that work? Well, well, I'm not sure what you. I mean, speaking about bringing things into the van and technology, <laughs> we got to collecting a lot of children's shoes in the van. And mentioned? some of them, you know, were higher tech than other, you know, some of them had like bright flashing lights, battery powered lights. And, and um, I don't know, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many children's shoes you find when you start looking for them. So that's one thing. It was in the van. We had, um, we'd store a lot of food in the van. The food that's supposed to be kept in refrigerators got kept in the van until it was eaten. Um Lots of clothes. We had a whole. We had a. We had a chain between the last bench seat, bench seat, and the bench seat before that. Chain across it with a whole wardrobe of clothes. So if you went into the back bench seat, it was called the hole. You were just covered with clothes. It was a great place. It was a sort of isolated. Um, you know, it, it was a hole back there. <laughs> it was better. A lot better than the original hole. The original hole that we had if you guys remember, was in the very, very back with yeah. gear stacked to the yeah. ceiling, and you were sitting in a canyon <laughs> watching it sort of teeter. And there'd be a point where you didn't care anymore, and you'd just fall asleep and not worry about if it's going to fall on you. And it uh, did sometimes. And it did. And the worst, I think, was when you would sleep on the floor in between the bench seats with the... <laughs> With the, uh, with the legs, the bent seat, the inch and a half from your face. Yeah, it was bad. I became a contortionist at mm -hmm. one point. Yeah. <clears throat> ah, life on the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even, even with comfy, you know, shocks and struts and stuff on your van, it's really not all that comfy. Yeah. Then, yeah. That's right. <laughs> oh, it was comfy. It, well, it was. It was the shocks and struts, you know, they do their job, but the floor and the arms and legs of the chairs do their job and too the i guess and the bacteria yeah <laughs> do, do, are you stuck listening to the same cassette or cd or whatever's on the radio or do you we, have we used to have the xm radio for a long time a little receiver you know and um that did a pretty good job we did keep that we kept the cd and we, there was this 98 van so it had a cassette deck in there so we had our adapter for the cd player and i mean i don't know if they make them anymore but ours we got every bit of life out of it it outlived the van actually 
the cassette. Yeah, the van, so we should say here we're up in North Carolina, the van died in Kernersville just about this time last year. And we've been sort of patching transportation together. Michael's got a great um, retrospective coming about the band, uh, about the band van, uh, musical retrospective. That song's going to be released in a little while. We don't know when, but you're going to love it. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't say, we, we got to get a part about the children's shoes in there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, that could get worrisome if, if somebody stops you at the wrong place. See, like, yeah, what you are, everybody oh, always sir, what are these children's shoes doing here? Jump to conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always, yeah, I think we always had a fear in the back of our minds that one of them would be like involved in some kind of murder case or something, mm-hmm. and they would look and then, aha! You know, the flashlight comes in. Oh, no. Maybe not murder. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit. You're giving everything away. He didn't say that. <laughs> We've got Packway Handle Band live at Studio B on WNCW this afternoon. Packwayhandle.com is their website, and they're playing in Asheville tonight at Isis Restaurant and Music Hall, and that'll be an early show, I believe. I think it's 9 o'clock, I believe. And then at the Visual Light Theater in Charlotte tomorrow night, and you can catch them you know, outside of Atlanta at Shaky Boots in May, mm-hmm. where it'll be a lot warmer. <laughs> 